And now I am delighted to introduce our distinguished 2021 commencement speaker, who right the second is traveling in low Earth orbit at nearly 18,000 miles per hour. By the time this entire ceremony is complete, she will have orbited the Earth twice. Megan MacArthur earned her bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering from UCLA in 1993 and her PhD in oceanography from UC San Diego in 2002. Since 2000, Megan has been with NASA and after a long and arduous training to become an astronaut, she was first assigned to the Shuttle Avionics Integration Laboratory and has held other roles at mission control and crew support. Her first mission uh, was in 2009 aboard Space Shuttle Atlantis to service the Hubble Space Telescope, which is one of the most important scientific instruments of all time. Thanks to Megan and her shuttle crewmates, Hubble is well into its third operational decade with many more years of discovery ahead. More than 10 years later, Space called out to her again and when I found out that Megan was going to pilot the NASA SpaceX Crew 2 mission this spring, I wrote to congratulate her and to invite her to be our commencement speaker. I was so thrilled when she said yes. And so in April, I went to the Kennedy Space Center to watch her and her crew lift off on her first journey to the International Space Station for a six month mission. What an extraordinary experience that was. Right now, Megan is the only woman in the international crew of seven that is conducting more than 200 science experiments in space, including new medical research uh, that will help scientists here on Earth fight diseases uh, and help space agencies around the world better understand how space affects the human body so that they can prepare astronauts for a long duration uh, space travel uh, to the moon and to other planets in the future. Now, in the middle of her jam-packed schedule, uh, just two weeks into her mission, uh, Megan found the time to take a 20-minute live interview from our mechanical engineering and aerospace engineering students. Proudly wearing her UCLA t-shirt, Megan even took a picture of her alma mater from space and did a few tweets to show her pride in being a Bruin engineer. Uh, we couldn't be more excited uh, that she again found the time to join her Bruin family here from aboard the space station to be our 2021 commencement speaker. Uh, and so without further ado, zooming by somewhere about Earth, our proud alumna, Megan MacArthur. UCLA School of Engineering, the space station has you loud and clear. Thank you, Dean Murphy, and hello from the International Space Station. Fellow Bruin engineers, congratulations on your graduation from UCLA, Samueli. When Dean Murphy asked if I would speak to you on this very special day, I jumped at the chance. This is, after all, my alma mater. UCLA was such an important part of my life, and I'm really grateful that I had the opportunity to attend the number one public university in the country as an aerospace engineering major. I honestly can't believe it's been nearly 30 years since my own graduation. I still remember vividly the excitement of putting on my cap and gown, and then celebrating as my fellow graduates and I turned the tassel that long ago summer, though I may have napped during other parts of the ceremony. 
As you mark this important milestone in your personal journey today, I wanted to share a few memories and lessons I learned while I was at UCLA. In 1993, I was a team member on a student project that built a vehicle to compete in the human-powered submarine races off the coast of Florida. For those of you involved in a competitive project at UCLA, this is going to sound familiar. Our team of six engineering majors had to design, build, test, and retest the submarine. We had to fundraise, stay on a budget, and meet a schedule. While each one of us had a specialty, we were always ready to chip in whenever another teammate needed help. We always worked together to solve technical problems. And even beyond our core team, the technicians and machinists in the shops spent extra time to help us. As the race drew near, we spent days and nights in our lab. On top of that, five of us were seniors and all of us had to keep up with our classes. The whole experience was exhausting, but it was a ton of fun and it was worth every minute. Even though there were a lot of challenges, I took away so much and I learned a lot about being an engineer and a teammate. In fact, that experience was a big part of my journey to become an astronaut. And although a long duration space mission certainly differs in size and scope, when you look at the fundamentals, they're not too far off from your student projects or your experience generally at UCLA. I have some tips to share with you that have served me well, both for my time at UCLA and as a NASA astronaut. Whether you're part of a crew that's embarked on a six month long space mission and have hundreds of engineers, scientists, and technicians all working around the clock to see the mission succeed, or you're a part of a small startup, you have to embrace effective teamwork to achieve big goals. It's how engineers all over the world and off the world solve the big problems that we face. For those of you graduating today, I'm sure you had that experience. It will serve you well going forward. Whether it was through a student club or for your class assignments, teamwork, where everyone brings something to the table, is what it takes to achieve big things. The second tip is that of course you have to be prepared when you're tackling big problems. You need to have a plan, and then you need to be flexible and versatile when the plan isn't working. As astronauts, we prepare and train over and over until our brains and muscle memory work in tandem. We work countless hours with some of the best engineers and technical staff around to prepare for any situation. Still, once we're on orbit, unexpected problems are bound to arise. This ranges from the most complex of problems to something as simple and familiar, yet frustrating, as dealing with stuck bolts in the middle of a project. This happened to my crew the last time I was in space while fixing the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope is an amazing scientific instrument with new discoveries seemingly every day. But it had been in space for almost 20 years at that point, and some of its instruments were failing. In particular, Hubble's imaging spectrograph needed a complex surgery that could only be performed by spacewalking astronauts. This instrument helps astronomers unlock the mysteries of the universe by measuring the chemical content, temperatures, and motion of planets and other celestial objects. But it was not designed to be opened up in space. And to get at its power supply, we had to remove a cover panel with over a hundred tiny, non-captive fasteners. Our brilliant engineers built a custom tool called the fastener capture plate to carefully remove the screws without releasing them into the telescope. But first, in order to install the plate, a handrail needed to be removed by releasing two simple large bolts. No problem, right? Unfortunately, one of those bolts didn't want to come out. After much discussion and rapid ground testing, our crew was directed to just tear the offending handrail right off. So, as I said before, prepare and then be flexible and versatile to find a solution. This is where your UCLA engineering education and experiences come in and will take you a long way toward whatever your goals are. That's because so much of what you'll be challenged with will be open-ended problems and the best solution may not be the obvious one or the easiest or the cheapest. Instead, be thinking about how can you best adapt to the parameters that you're given and the situation that you're in. At NASA, we ask ourselves these questions all the time. What your computer science professors really wanted you to learn wasn't necessarily a specific programming language, but how to use any language to make us all connect better. And if you're a design aerospace engineer, it wasn't just about specific propulsion systems and spacecraft materials. It's how to use that knowledge to build the next level vehicles, the ones that will take humans to other parts of the solar system. 
Another lesson I've learned in my own journey is don't lose your real passions. The submarine project I mentioned earlier got me interested in exploring the oceans. I earned my PhD at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego. And after earning my doctorate, I thought I would be on my way to a research career using acoustical engineering to help unlock some of the mysteries of the ocean. But you know what? The idea of being an astronaut was something that had stayed tucked in my brain from when I was younger. My dad was a career naval aviator stationed at Moffett Field Naval Air Station when I was a teenager. If you're from the Bay Area, it's where those humongous hangars just north of 101 in Sunnyvale are located. This is also where NASA's Ames Research Center is, and as a teenager, I used to watch astronauts arrive to conduct training on the shuttle simulators there. That made me think about space exploration and what it would take to be part of an endeavor like that. So, even though I was on track for a career in oceanography, I took a chance and applied to be an astronaut candidate because in the back of my mind, it's what I really wanted to do. And I got selected, I could hardly believe it. And now here I am working in space. I'm so glad I took that chance. The same goes for you. If there's a passion in you, don't lose that. And if you spot an opportunity, one that you really, really wanna pursue, don't be afraid to give it a go. You won't regret going for it and you might even land it. And don't be too shy about sharing your big dreams with the people around you. You may be surprised by how they can help you. And for those of you out there who have been told growing up that you can't be an astronaut or a mechanical engineer or pursue any other profession because of your gender or where you're from or for any reason, look to NASA. Our diverse workforce achieves amazing things every day by bringing their unique, creative, entire selves to the job. Believe in yourself and believe that you can succeed in fulfilling your goals by working hard and never giving up. So, congratulations UCLA Samueli graduates. You have worked so hard to get your degree, a bachelor's, master's, or PhD. You've put in so much time and effort to reach this milestone. So now it's time to celebrate and it's time to reset for the next part of your journey, wherever it may take you. I'm so honored to be part of this special day with you. Thank you and go Bruins! <laughs>